Howdy, gang. Coming to you today from Newport Beach, Rhode Island. That's the view outside there. Yeah, so very early in the morning, though. Still having my morning Joe. So Yak Now Who asks... I don't have problems with the lyric here, she says. How do people come up with memorable melodies for their lyrics? This is a great question. I sort of touched on this a little bit in my free songwriting course, which you can find on social media, on YouTube, on TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go into that a little further. How do you do it? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways. The first way I suggest is Make your song easy to sing, at least in the verses. And what I mean by that is keep to around five or six notes from the tonic for the verses. Because generally speaking, that's the narrative part. That's where you're trying to pull the listener in. You're trying to capture them and have them relate to whatever it is you're trying to put across. It also makes it easier to sing when you stick within five to six notes of the tonic. Okay, cool. Now, almost every, I don't know about every, but almost every great, big, huge, memorable pop song goes up on the chorus, right? Think about it. It goes up an octave, it goes up a fifth, it definitely goes at least up a third, maybe a fourth, because you have to lift the listener. You have to take them to the next plateau of the song, lift them up, carry them with you to the next part of the message. So that's the first part of making it memorable and hooky and grabbing them. But there's a couple of other techniques that I've used and I was taught thankfully, from some really, really great writers over the years. And that is, and I've mentioned one of these before, horn charts, right? Think like a horn player, because horn players are always trying to play vocally. They're trying to play like a singer, or mimic a singer, or complement a singer. So the way the horn player might play might be something that's a counter to the singer, but if there is no singer, then that becomes the melody. It's also a technique I've used when coming up for harmonies. Like I wrote a song once, I think I mentioned this before in a video, I wrote a song once and a friend of mine is like, oh, you know what, that's really great, but that chorus sounds just like uh, this Johnny Cash song. So what I did was, is I used the harmony I was going to sing to that chorus and that became the new melody. So if you're thinking like a horn player and horn players are trying to mimic singers, you can come up with counter melodies, you can come up with harmonies, you can come up with harmonies that then become the melody if you like it better than what you wrote originally. You see what I'm saying? And because probably the melody to many people, not to me and many of my friends possibly, but to many people the melody is probably more important than the lyrics. So how do you get something lilty and and create? Okay, well, this is the other part of it. So the horn, thinking like a horn player is one part of it. Thinking like a keyboard player, or at least thinking of the keyboard, meaning when you're thinking of melodies and you're singing, you're sh- let's just say you play guitar. I play guitar, but I also play keyboards. I'm just gonna use the example if you play guitar. If you play guitar and you're strumming chords, you're not seeing the keyboard. By seeing the keyboard in front of you, you're seeing all the notes of the scale. You're visualizing it and you're thinking in between the chords. You're not thinking of full chords, you're, th- you're seeing the notes. And you can think of intervals between the notes as more, a little bit more creatively than you could if you were just strumming. And if you're a keyboard player who's maybe a beginner or intermediate and you're mostly playing chords, start thinking in arpeggios. Start thinking in arpeggios and then start thinking in ghost notes between the arpeggios, the half steps that lead you to the first, third, fifth octave, the notes in between. 
and try them and mess around with them. And most of all, don't think that a song is done just because you finished it. Don't think a song is done just because you finished it. Work on it over and over again, over and over. And even if you're happy with the lyrics, that's great. Now, refine the melody, refine the melody until it becomes intoxicating, until people in the next room, until your neighbors, <laughs> until the person downstairs, until the mailman can hear it through the window and go, what the hell? No, oh, that's really, you know, it's intoxicating. Just work on it over and over again. Keep trying different things. And last but not least, the lyrics should sound like the music and vice versa. I've, I've, I've used this example many times, and it's not a pop example by any means, but it's a very, very old example. Why did Robert Johnson say, it's got to be raining outdoors rather than it's got to be raining outside? Like, wouldn't you say, hey, it, it's, it's raining outside? And he said, no, it's raining outdoors. Well, it's because outdoors sounded like the notes listened to that song. It sounds like the notes, it's got to be raining outdoors. Because he's playing slide guitar and he's going, wow, wow, outdoors. So the lyrics sound like the music and vice versa. So I hope that's helpful.